All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, stories preserve culture and pass on culture knowledge from one generation to another. In essence, stories keep cultures alive. Stories provide a timeless link to ancient trans um, traditions, legends, myths, and archetypes. Now, but they also connect us to the universal truth about ourselves and our world. Now, referencing an article by Daniel Igbini, nation building can be seen as a process of constructing or structuring a national identity using um, the state power which aim at the unification of the people within the state so that it remains politically stable and viable in the long run and nigeria continues to grow up um, around the orbit of nation building without a genuine attempt to rotate it what impact do you think storytelling can have on nation building and how can we begin to use that to transform our nation that's the conversation tonight now let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us an sms or whatsapp to 81 803 you can also tweet at us at way show africa uh, with the hashtag way show so i wanted to hear your thoughts quickly then i'll bring in victor kai what do you think do you think because you see i was just having a conversation with him at the lounge when he when he came in I said, currently in Nigeria, I mean, we're in a political season mm -hmm. and the same rhetoric, it's like yeah. definition of insanity, is saying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. The story I hear around, right, the kinds of conversations that I hear people drive around nation, transformation and everything around Nigeria, is still the same old story. Mm -hmm. We're not telling it differently. We're not changing the, the thought process. We're not changing the conversation. The issues are same, the same. The, the, No, the direction even of the conversation is still the same. So how do you then expect that anything is going to change or anything is going to transform in the nation. So for me, that was what informed the conversation for today. But let me hear your thoughts. Do you think, you know, how do you think we can transform Nigeria through, like, the right stories? I mean, this British monarchy that just, I mean, the passing of the Queen has really sparked up a lot of conversation. But you can tell the Brit is very, the British guys, they are very deliberate about the, the narrative that they want you to, 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 to stick to. Well, let me hear your thoughts quickly. <laughs> like I, oh, sorry, let me just. Yeah, no, you go yeah, first. Not, I don't have an intelligent response like you, so let me just rush it. I had said last week that we need radicals that are truth talkers because a lot of people don't have the integrity to stand up and speak the truth. Mm -hmm. They're too afraid. Like the song fell sack. My mother just born house. I just uh, married wife. If you're afraid, how would you ever get truth mm -hmm. to set us free? Mm -hmm. Be radical, speak the truth, start from yourself. Someone like me, I'm so bold, sir. <laughs> they, they call me small, but my team. <laughs> as tiny as I am, I can face anybody and tell them what they need to hear. Truth, first of all, needs to be told, not the embellished versions of what suits us. Okay. How are you, man? Mm -hmm. Okay, so history was removed from our secondary school's curriculum mm -hmm. in 2009, supposedly because the students were avoiding the topic the graduates were not getting any job and the teachers were scarce. Okay. But this was a big mistake and they found out later because history, storytelling helps us to preserve our national identity, mm. cultural identity, that's number one. A few weeks ago, I, I read a book titled Mark um, Sulian's book, I think Soldiers of Fortune. Mm. And then I watched the phenomenal um, Babangida's autobiography, mm. Badamosi. That's mm. just a bad movie. <laughs> You know, so I tell you the truth. You know why I like this too? Because the sorry, book, bad as a bad. <laughs> no, 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 the way they say it's 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 No, 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 just so we're clear about that. Yeah. Good move. That's yeah. good move. That's what I was trying to say. It's so bad. Yeah. Exactly. So the book, The Soldiers of Fortune, um, reflects three mesmerizing characters. We have Abacha, we have Abiola, and then we have Obasanjo. Mm. And then the movie by the Mosi now. Ooh, talks about the whole thing that happened but now it's coming from Babangida's perspective, perspective. Pers his world and I think every Nigerian should um, watch this movie and read this book because so many things are already lost in history mm -hmm. the reason you say that things are repeating itself mm -hmm. is because you know there's so many people that this is the first time they're watching this movie mm -hmm. that is going on in Nigeria right now mm -hmm. and then the book um, depicts the several near-death experiences that Nigeria encountered. Mm. And I think that we should go back to that time because that is exactly what's going on right now. Could I quickly add something before we move on? It's easy for them to tell the story. 
like you said, like um, I did be telling it mm -hmm. in, from his perspective. Yeah. Probably in a subjective manner. Of course. I've watched an interview where former governor Nnoyo spoke with Okudele um, Bombodu for five hours and 27 minutes, telling the history of what he had seen in politics and business and everything. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he also said, I can tell the truth now because there's nothing anybody wants to do to an old man. Do you understand? Mm. But when they were still benefiting from the things that they was being told, we never heard the truth. Mm. On that note, let me bring in our guest. Victor Okai is the former presidential candidate and the president of Directors Guild of Nigeria, a seasoned producer, scriptwriter, cinematographer, director, and a film and a film consultant. He's the founder and the director of In Short Film Festival, the biggest short film festival in sub-Saharan Africa, and a member of the Nigerian Oscar Selection Committee. Um, he's joined us live in studio, and we're super honored to be having him have this. Wow conversation tonight with us. Thank you so much for joining us, Victor Kai. Okay. Thank you for having me. Now, it's such an interesting conversation because I, I heard you like trying to interject uh, well, money. Let me start. I have yeah. a protest first of all. Go ahead, please. Um, apart from the fact that I'm outnumbered here. There's no cop in front of you. Exactly. I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> I just so you can see. We eh? shall bring no, the cop. Fine. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, then we'll bring, we'll bring the we'll bring the liquid. Okay, we're used to it. We're so sorry. We went after the round. It's okay. We're going to talk about the trend. I wanted to say we're men here. It's, a, it's an oversight, but, but but I know, you know, we men, you know, we are, mm -hmm. you know, we're a wonderful characters. We yeah. men, we men, eh? We men, we men, we men. We're all men. So yeah. It's okay. You're cool. It's fine. <laughs> but, but I mean, Victor, thank you so much again for joining well, us this evening me. because this conversation is, is quite an interesting one. Um, like I was having a banter with you earlier. I said you have been in both worlds. You are in the storytelling world and you're also in the political world. Having that you ran, you know, for the office of the presidency in Nigeria here. So tell us, right, because now I'm looking at the, the political scene. 2023 is around the corner. We here, we are always trying to focus on things that would provoke certain kinds of thoughts. And when I try to listen in on conversations, right, we're still telling the same story. I'll give you an example. The Messiah kind of story that we think it yeah. is a Messiah that would change Nigeria. It's the same story we're telling, regardless of, you know, what it is, the situation that's happening, regardless of what we have experienced with a Messiah that we had picked before, mm -hmm. you know, and if we expect that Nigeria is going to change or transform, yeah. why are we still telling those stories? Why are we not changing the narrative? Why are we not driving the right, you know, message so that we can actually really, really see an effective transformation in the country? It's not so difficult. The politicians are clever and adept at um, what they're doing. I'll give you an example. Um, you know what they say? Uh, what you, it's bad manners to talk with your mouth full. Mm. Mm. I don't know if you heard me. I heard eh? <laughs> it's bad manners to talk while you're eating. That's what she said. Let me put uh, it better. Uh, eh? benefit. Why still benefit? <laughs> yes, no, so it's come. bad manners to talk mm. when you're eating. Mm. So, but how come those same people who when they're eating, we don't hear anything. When suddenly, when something suddenly goes awry, then they're all over the place. Oh, my people, my people, my people. Mm -hmm. And then they expect you to come and lay your lives for them. Yes. That has been repeated over and over and over again. And what makes us most vulnerable are, it's not even about money. Religion, I'd say that's, a card they play. The biggest things. Um, ethnicity mm -hmm. is another. I don't like talking about this, but let me just say this here. Yes. 2015, some of us were old enough, we knew who Buhari was. We, we, he, I mean, he has not changed. Um, and he's not never going to change. And But those who packaged him were very clever. If you've seen a masquerade, 
The real person is behind the mask, right? The mask is in front. In the southwest, the mask, in the southwest, and for many Christians in this part, the mask was Wishibajo. Uh, mm -hmm. So what you saw was a mask, which is not the real person. And then that's what you were going for. So a lot of people would know he's from our place. Let's, you understand? And um, He's a pastor. Yes, he's a pastor. He's a, and I say to people from Ogun State, what have you benefited from mm -hmm. this, from the person you have, the, the mask you have put in government right now. And I say this, um, I'm going to be as dispassionate as possible. This is not about, because there's nothing I'm saying that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. And so you find that the same thing is repeated. When they go, you see, whether it's Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, Edo, or whatever, when they're in the National Assembly, everything is just perfect. When the children are getting married, you should see them partying. It's, it's, it's one big party. They're all one. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody begins to lose out, then he remembers his constituents or his constituency mm -hmm. and invites them and says, Look, they're trying to cheat me because I'm, uh, I'm, a, 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 you know, I'm a Christian and they want to marginalize me. Oh, it's because I'm not uh, from their part of the country and all of that. And the fools, I'm sorry to say, will fall for it as they have always done, again and again and again. Now, that, there's got to be a tipping point, and we're getting to that point. You think so? Yes, I know so. And the reason is that, um, much as I would like to say education liberates uh, people, but I've seen very educated idiots in this country. <laughs> Please excuse me as a strong Please language. <laughs> you know, people who would willingly suspend common sense mm. and call Malu brother because they want to eat beef. Mm. We have so many of them. For their own, I would say, enlightened, selfish, not just self, mm. selfish interest. What is the tipping point? What is happening right now? I want to say that there's nothing that, for instance, that Peter Obi is doing. He's not even doing anything to help what is going on. Yes. He, was, he had the opportunity of speaking and people heard him and he told some stories that resonated mm -hmm. well within a certain group of people and all that. But what really made it work was what happened at the Lekki toll gate. Mm -hmm. um, that was like, you know, before now, young people or younger people were, you know, indifferent about politics. When it's time for election, I mean, they couldn't be bothered. Show, yes, yeah. they, don't, they, they couldn't be bothered. Mm. For old people, more than I go vote, you're not know, concerned us mm. and all that. But when a finger was poked in the eyes of the young people, then finally it was like, oh. And let me tell you what made it even more serious. You know, what started it all? What is NSAS after all? Is, uh, uh, NSAS is war against Yahoo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> war against Yahoo, Yahoo boys, isn't it? Mm -hmm. eh? So, and so, and don't forget, these guys are also very, they are techy as well, mm -hmm. you know. So, and so, anything that will threaten your Gary will make you... Come out and fight. It will fight with everything that you have. Mm -hmm. Your liver will boil, <laughs> even in cold water, <laughs> you know. So, that was really like, it was too close to home. Yeah. And so, it was a personal battle. Apart from the fact that, yes, as they say, Mechanic knowledge does not mad people again. <laughs> eh? mm. So you can't tell who is genuine mm. from who is not. And so answers, I mean, I say answers, so excuse me. So if I say so, I understand what I mean. But yeah. SARS would now pick up both the innocent and, you know, the not so the innocent, mm. you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they will pick up everybody. And so, and that part, they got drunk with it. And so it's like, so that kind of filled their cup. And so it got to a tipping point where they now revolted. And then these people were able to, the real guilty ones were able to, you know, fan it very well, fan it very well because it was in their, interest. in their interests as well. But it was also good that it happened because it has created an awareness. Um, a generation has been ruling this country since 1966. That generation has remained in power, both in, 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 under military. the military, 
civilian, mm -hmm. military, and back to civilian again. They remain in power, and the and what's happening is, even when they open up a little and bring in some people, it's not just or they begin to train their own children mm -hmm. and their own stooges to take over from them. Mm -hmm. The now, difference. yes, exactly. So now this cannot go on for much longer. You saw what happened in is this Sri Lanka recently. Mm -hmm. So what happened at that gate was like, I mean, they had had it to hear. Mm -hmm. And they now realize, look, we have, we're supposed to be the leaders of tomorrow. But even our fathers never had a chance. So do you, are you trying to say to me that because of the incident at the Leki Toge, the NSARS incident, it means that this story will change in 2023? Are you trying to Not say? Not 2023. What? <laughs> the story has changed already. Okay. How? Um, I'm sure you're, you're, I don't know, but do you have your voters card? Let me not make assumptions. Well, I don't. Do you? You don't? No, I have dual citizenship. Anything happens at Okay. We should Let's take a break. We show. need to take lighting off our <laughs> set. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back that you can answer the question. Yep. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the impact of storytelling on nation building, and we have with us Victor Okai. Now remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so you were trying to explain the narrative that the story has changed at the because of the incident of the NSARS protests. That's, but you see, I beg to differ. Because we still have that Messiah syndrome with this new story that they're telling, right? So Nigeria has a problem. We have a huge problem in our, on our hands. And Nigerians always believe that, okay, once we put the right person there, Peter will, will be in all his accolades, right? If we reel out his whatever, he seems to be a good candidate, you know, to be able to run a good system in Nigeria. But is just being good enough? Because we had this Messiah. That's not what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, so let's go ahead. You, so what how I'm did the saying, story change? Yes. The story that has changed is simply this. That it's no longer, what do you call it now, uh, as usual. How do you say it? Business as usual. It's no longer, it's not business unusual, if mm. you like. It's no longer business as usual. Um, in the past, you could take it for granted that, look, this state... Is is taken? Mm. Oh, well, the presidency is taken. You might say power of incumbency. You you would have it, and all of that. I don't think there's any candidate right now out there that is absolutely sure for the very first time. Mm. None. Okay, and the dynamics have changed. If you look at it, if you see what's happening now, the power. The, let me tell you where the the, the power shift. The dynamics have altered seriously. I look at a lot of people. Before now, what the people who go to vote are mainly party members mm. so that they can retain the oh, status quo and then a few others. Mm. Eh? But what has happened now, and you know, majority of the people who are registered to vote usually are not party members. And a lot of them don't come out to vote. So you see one million people registered, only 300 and something thousand will come out and vote. What happened to the remaining 700 eh, that registered? This time around, what is happening is, yes, the party people will start by their candidates, but that's no longer going to be enough. The people out there, so-called undecided, not because they're undecided, now they're decided. Okay? But these people that were, you know, indifferent in the past, have now decided that they will have a say in what happens in this country. And that, and if you look at it right now, what's the youth population again, of voters now, not mm -hmm. just the real youth population? Yeah. Um, I don't I think know it's about 70% right of um, the voters' population are youth. Okay. So let, me use, let me use, let me use, my sympathy is not with anybody, but I just want to do a bit of analysis here, if you allow me, because our job is to analyze. For those who look at Adobe, for instance, say, oh, he has no structure and all that. I say to win the election, you only need 24 states. I don't know what happens if we're going to do a 12 to 3rd again when the federal capital territory comes into the play. But that's like 24 states, say two-thirds, mm -hmm. with one quarter 
and a simple majority. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So, which means you can win with one vote. As long as you have at least 25%, that's a quarter of the votes, in at least 24 states. Mm. Okay? Now, here is where it begins to become very interesting. In the past, an article would have assumed that it's automatic, it's it's automatic in the southeast. Mm. Eh? People would just vote like zombie. They would just, I mean, they would just vote for, for him there. Mm. He would assume that south-south, too, the same thing would happen. And then he would ask, okay, let me see how I can clean out the north, coming from the north. A Tinubu, for instance, would have assumed that the southwest is taken, is taken mm -hmm. as well. And I'm, I'm sure he still feels the same way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'll tell you, I, I'm going to bring out some very interesting things here. Now, perspectives that probably people are not looking at and they're not even discussing. Um, well, there are the three major ones. The mm -hmm. other guy played himself out. Now, here's where it begins to get interesting. The young people that have come out are at least... 30% of the voting population. Let me not go to 70. Mm. The ones that are now determined to take back their, their present, not just their future. Let their voices be heard. Who want their voices to be heard. And you find a lot of them going, up, they are now in the so-called obedient movement. Excuse my use of that language. And then, not only that, you also find the South is, forget what everybody is saying. They may vote whatever at the state level. But right now, I can tell you, block vote. You will see them, they will go as one. Hmm. Again, what is the second highest population of non-indigenous in any state? They are the Igbo people. Hmm. In every state. Everywhere. True or false? Yes. Okay. It's, it's getting more interesting, isn't it? Yes. So you may say there is no structure, but something is shaping out. The young people, say? I was going to interject, sorry, sir. Yes. When they say about, oh, there's no structure, we can hear maybe he wins the elections. An argument somebody said to me that made sense to me, because I'm learning, was that, okay, he wins the elections, he becomes president. How will he what influence does he have in the National Assembly when the party members... Oh, I can tell you straight away. You that's not a problem at all. Yes. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. You know how there's a bandwagon effect. As soon as you are... In fact, before he's even sworn in, mm. eh, Everybody the party will, will break in many of these places. And, and they all, power. No, all of them... They want to chop, so what they What makes you feel yes. that the people inside there right now are loyal to the government? Yes. I said so. When someone, printed <laughs> list, what I'm saying. someone printed a list of people that were, I think it was at PDP, I said he's printing their names in case they are double agents. So <laughs> that the other people they're working for will say that, okay, at least we know so openly this is... You know, you know why this is beautiful? Mm. OP is just a symbol of if you like the frustration or the built so up the of the so, 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 so I'm coming to the issue this. of the narrative. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm telling you that the story has changed mm. not that it is going to change. Mm. And it can be anybody. Mm. There may be, you may not have OB again mm. tomorrow, mm. but I can tell you that this new tribe will find another champion. Mm. It may not just One yeah. that <laughs> sings a song that resonates or that strikes a responsive chord mm. in them. And it's not about say what you say. It's not about what you say. Because take note, during the answer, some people wanted to hijack it. Yeah. And take ownership and say no. It's not about anybody. Yes. Okay? The same way, what has helped to be so far is that he's just going with the flow. Mm. The day he decides to take ownership and say it is about me, he might lose it. Mm. About me may mean you want to go and strike deals. You say, okay, you want to help yourself. You go and join. You want to uh, probably uh, parley with another party or mm. anything like that. They say, eh, you think it's about you? Believe me, they will find somebody else just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay? The story has changed. I can tell you what is happening. The drum beat that is playing right now is not music in the ears of the bigger parties, mm -hmm. the old parties. They know. He's a, they never saw him coming. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you win or not, that's a different matter. I'm not going into all that. That's not my business. Although I've just tried to do a bit of analysis. But the song has changed. And... What they're hearing is not music in their ears. Mm. It's giving them nightmares. 
All of them right now, is, in the past, it have been APC versus PDP. It's no longer the case. It's APC versus Peter Obi, not even Labour Party. Yeah. It's Atiku versus Peter Obi. Yeah. Mm. And, and you see, what is happening here is, Peter Obi could have been Igbo, Hausa, yeah. Yoruba, it could yeah. have been anybody. anybody. So, right now we're so it's at not about a tribal leader. Yes. 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 So that's what, that's what, that's what that, this movement represents. I'm a student of movements. Mm -hmm. I even have, there's a video I usually use to uh, illustrate it, but I, if I, it didn't occur to me, I probably have brought it here. It's a very short video. The nature of, let me use technology and all that to illustrate what I'm saying. Talking about innovation and disruption. The nature of innovation and disruption is you never see it coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't see it coming. Mm -hmm. Kodak never saw digital yeah. technology coming. They looked down and it was like, who are these guys? You know? These infrared, even, even, uh, those who were pure, who were sh thin no, purists. Yes, it was like, <laughs> Let's not talk about Nokia and uh, Apple uh, uh, and Samsung. I'm, 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 no, <laughs> and I'm, Apple. I'm Bla Blackberry. Blackberry. Oh, yellow yes. taxi and bolts. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the bolt <laughs> one, I go, you know, in taxi parks, you see them still playing their draft as well. Yeah. They say, ah, or at the airport, they don't know what the time is saying. It's what the same thing happened with the printing press mm. when typesetting started. You know, in those days, they used to have what was called letter press, mm. and they would, you know, begin to do these things manually and all that. Yes. But and so when graphics says that, forget it, it can never mm. be the same thing. They never. So the nature of disruption mm. and innovation is you never see it coming, and in the beginning, it will look like it. The and reason you don't see it noise. coming, yes, it, it looks like nothing. It's um, it's not attractive. It's not well formed mm -hmm. it's not well shaped you know it's like a child learning to walk mm -hmm. you know you rise you fall you rise you fall and all of that but before you know what is happening the child becomes a man oh and yes a fish. exactly so yes. that is exactly what is happening now mm -hmm. and so the old parties are start, oh we have structures we have mm -hmm. people all over the place you don't have any structures you, don't, you forget that people make the structures. Yes. The integrity of your structure is the people. It's like, you talk about security. Mm -hmm. No matter how secure a castle is, and it was said, that, the same was said about the wall of China. Mm -hmm. It was as good as the people that were manning the gates. Of course. So let's, so let's, it doesn't matter let's how bring big. it back home because we're, yes. we're running out of time, like joke, like joke. <laughs> Just give me a, a minute. If we were to say that what, if you are saying, because I still choose to stay on the lane that the story hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. But from your analysis, I want to believe that maybe the story has changed. So what do you There's think? There's a disruption. There's a disruption. And you're, you're not seeing it yet. <laughs> so, no, no, no. I have seen that disruption. I'm just saying. The, I'm problem, I say you the problem I have with the disruption that has happened is that... That is happening. Or that is happening is that the fact that we still believe that we need a messiah so regardless, it's not it's not even about think it, no. Feels that, way. that is the, that's that's how Messiah. Nigerians believe. But can I say something about the Messiah? No, because you repeated something. it several times. I've yeah. said it several Let times. Let me say this to you. The thing is this: only one person is going to be there. Okay. So whether we like yes. it, it's not a Messiah per yes. se. So, so, yes. right so there's a symbol yeah. for every struggle, mm. and that symbol must not necessarily look in any particular way. It doesn't have to be. Tall, short, it can be, you know, these things when they happen, you know, leadership. Leadership is something that uh, it could be circumstantial. Mm -hmm. eh? If we're right now in a place where we're just walking in a bush path and all that, and suddenly we hear a lion roar or we see a big python or something, and we all panic or we hear something like a bomb. If a child is the only one that says, I know the way, let's go this way, believe me, he becomes a leader at that point. Mm. I believe you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to. So, oh, okay, 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 so much. So oh, sorry. I just wanted to talk because I normally don't come no, on Mondays. No, no. <laughs> so I don't get to talk. When you asked that as the story changed and he said yes, and you said, oh, are we going to see a change in 2023? I believe that the change may not necessarily happen. So, but why not? I'm just saying. It could, it could not, but the conversation has started. 
The thing I fear is that if we get it wrong again in 2023, mm. the momentum we gain from NSAS, yes. waiting for another four years after 2023, for may take away the fire. And then some may even start thinking. Lady, what I'm just say saying is that something has happened. I don't think there's any fire that is going out. I think the fire is just beginning to catch. I'm saying anything. that something has happened. Yeah. He said that we were gaining or an awakening started with NSAS. I'm saying now that, God forbid, if we get it wrong and we still get the same old, same old in 2023, the fire may need to be blown for embers okay, so in 2020. Let, let's ask about this fire because that's where I think I want to bring the other part of you, outside mm -hmm. of the politician, the storytelling part of you. Mm -hmm. How can we start to become a lot more deliberate about the stories that we put out in the mainstream media to help us continue to project what a proper nation should look like. Okay, so unfortunately, the people that have been helping us to do this are even from outside. You hear political foundations like the MacArthur Foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hear, uh, what's this German foundation? Ford again? Foundation tells stories too. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what they do is, they don't tell the stories, but they influence the, the stories. The, the, the sponsor. The, yes. The, okay. Mm. So you see, a Sahara reporter, for instance, getting grants mm. to push their narrative. I mean, a narrative towards um, democracy or whatever, or good mm. governance and all that. Uh, you find an Adeola, uh, is it Fashi or what? Uh, Fayou, mm. for instance, they identify... Uh, thought leaders like that yes. uh, and then begin to put money their way to see how they can help shape the conversations in the direction that they think um, the country should be going. Mm. Now, um, why I do not think this fire is going to go away so soon is that by May next year, when you have started paying uh, buying a dollar for probably about 1,500 Naira, um, we're not going to find it funny anymore. Mm. Let me tell you, there's a, there's a whole new tribe out there. All the people that are doing Japa, or whatever you call it, <laughs> eh? when they go out there, something happens. Yes, you make the money, but you know, money, if, you have, if you're not married to a rich man, mm. You assume that it's all cozy out there. Ah, God, if only I can. This woman is enjoying. You don't know what you don't know what the curtains are covering. Mm. You assume mm. that it's all rosy. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're enduring. Okay? Until you get in there, and then suddenly you begin to say to yourself, Oh God, I mean, this is hell. Even if it's just I don't mind the driver. I don't get me wrong. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because it probably makes you feel more fulfilled. He understands you. He listens to you. He's always there for you, mm -hmm. for instance. Now, the same thing with uh, citizens that are going out there. You go there, you make all that money. Suddenly, the, the peanuts you put in your mouth begin to taste like granite because, mm -hmm. you see, you can't get the respect with the kind of money you make there like mm -hmm. you would get here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you are best second-class second, -hand, second -class citizen. citizen. You have to work 10 times as hard as, hard as your colleagues to be able to get halfway where yeah. they are, mm. yeah. okay? And then, after a while, have you not seen people in high-paying jobs and all that, and suddenly they just drop the job, and, and they're, they're not, doing, they're not cool. doing again? Mm. It's not that they're crazy, but it's just that they're not finding fulfillment and all that. Mm. And so, we have a whole new tribe out there that want to come back. Yeah. Now, this tribe is highly educated, um, financially empowered, empowered, empowered mm -hmm. you know, and they are becoming more deliberate. If you notice, many of them are coming back into politics, mm. okay? And I can tell you that even from there, they can organize themselves eh, <laughs> to come back. So even if you think, the NSAS, for instance, part of the funding came from out there. Mm. From people who said, yes. I like what you guys are doing, and they were pumping the money. Mm. Okay? So, that same tribe, when I say tribe, you know what I mean now. Mm -hmm. That group eh, is dissatisfied. They don't like what is going on. Yeah. Many of them also want to come back. Many of them would like a Nigeria.
That, come yes, that they can Absolutely. Come back. We run out of time. I know. Let me quickly take comments. I'm sorry. Good evening, ladies. My uh, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Impact of storytelling on nation building. In a nutshell, what happened during NSAR's episode when the youth demonstrated is enough for a change because the youth are tired. To the um they are tired. To the youth, they feel that Peter Obi is the Messiah that will take that, that will take our great um, country and nation. Um, Nigeria forward. According to your guest, there is no guarantee that it will happen like that. According to Sister Lady, that fire has to be there to keep burning. My name is Daniel Ilo, your ways regular fan. Thank you, Daniel. I have one more, then I'll come to you, ladies. Okay. Um, this is from Ade. Ade is in the UK. It says, Good evening, ladies. In my opinion, the youth has less blame because eradicating um, because eradicating history in our secondary schools has led us to this problem. I was going to even come back to that, but we ran mm -hmm. out of time. The value of Nigeria and her heritage needs to be thought. The leaders in governance should be visionary. Most of our leaders in government are missionaries. A mission to embezzle from public funds, <laughs> remit it abroad, <laughs> send their families overseas, and japa after the end of their tenure in office. Number yep. four, it's time for you to take over. Enough is enough. Lady has dual citizenship. She's ready to japa when the... When when Nigeria is boiling. Yeah, yeah, quickly, 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 quickly. We ran out of time. Let me just read one. Someone said nothing has changed. From the elections that have taken place in the off-season elections, it is simply APC against PDP. Hmm. Which is what we were saying Absolutely. about it. it stays the same. This is awesome Fire has to Delta. Be. The truth of the matter is that many Nigerians either fail to read in between the lines, as your guest stated, or they are just being mischievous. Apart from the politicians who distort facts to suit them, what suit them? What of the quality of reportage from the media? The same twist happens, except few ones that decided to brace truth no matter what ox is God. The question Ua asked about answers in Lagos and the Messiah theory was not addressed logically. Nationhood can't be achieved if we are continually fed with falsehood. I recommend the book by Chinua Achebe titled, There Was a Country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I had a w another quest, uh, comment quickly. Uh, great topic at Waze. I must recommend, I must commend Nance today, the way they organize themselves in shutting down the Lagos International Airport. How I wish all who use the na um, resilience used by Nance today during the next elections mm -hmm. to vote out bad leaders. The ball is in our court and we will be in a cage again, God forbid. Jo Bobby Kennedy from Jalingo. Thank you so much. So now before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram everywhere at Waze Show Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagement. Thank you again, Victor Kai. Thank you, ladies. All right. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. A nation's culture resides in the heart and the souls um, of its people. This is from Mahatma Gandhi. We'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.